There was much excitement amongst the world's scientific community when China's Chang'e 3 mission soft landed on the moon late last year. The first soft landing since the Soviet Union's Luna 24 in 1976. The conspiracy theorists were very excited too. Surely now they would have the proof they needed to show that the Apollo missions were faked. Tragically, it was not to be. It all started to go wrong for the hoax nuts as soon as Chang'e 3 sent back its first pictures, such as this one. It's not the striking similarity of the lunar surface between this and the second photo that Neil Armstrong took after he exited Lunar Module Eagle that immediately catch the eye. It's the complete absence of stars in the lunar sky. Bill Casing and his progeny told us that the sky should be teeming with stars. But the wheels really started to come off the hoax nut bandwagon when the lander deployed the U-2 rover. Multiple strands of the moon hoax theory were instantly busted. The rover made nice sharp tracks in the dry lunar dust. The hoax nuts had told us this was only possible in wet material in a studio on Earth. And surprise, surprise, there was absolutely no sign of a blast crater under the lander. And there was a glorious and magnificent kick in the teeth for serial idiot David Percy because the down sun side of the lander is lit up like a Christmas tree. Percy's claim that only secondary studio lighting can explain the visibility of Buzz Aldrin in these photos is now conclusively shown to be utter codswallop. You can see the effect very clearly in this photo of the Chinese rover. The down sun side of the rover is clearly illuminated by sunlight reflected back off the lunar surface towards the source. The wheels which are right down deep in the shadow, do not get much reflected light, just like Buzz's boots. There was one apparent discrepancy that caused the hoax nuts to wet themselves, the colour of the lunar surface. Sadly for them, they didn't realise that in the hurry to publicise their success, the Chinese used an image which was actually a photo of a control room video screen. When the images themselves were published, the colour of the lunar surface was entirely consistent with what we see in Apollo photos. As has been well documented, the appearance of the lunar surface changes depending on the angle you view it from and the elevation of the sun in the lunar sky. Perhaps it's easier if I let Neil Armstrong explain. Looking at the photographs that you brought back, uh, the coloured photographs of the moon surface, it seems that the colour of the surface actually varies according to the angle from which you see it. Is this so? Does it, uh, does it do this? Yes, it certainly does. Uh, it's a characteristic that we observe first while uh, travelling around the moon in orbit. You can see that at the terminator, at the, uh, the, the boundary between the black part of the moon and the lighted part of the moon. Uh, it was as if you were looking at a television set with the contrast turned uh, to f uh, full contrast, very black and very white. Uh, as you moved uh, further into the light, there were more and more shades of gray. But as you moved further, such the sun was higher above the horizon, you actually start to see the uh, tans and browns appear, although uh, at a very low level. Similarly, on the surface of the moon, the same characteristic is evident. 
you can see uh, browns uh, if the sun is high enough. Apollo 12, for example, landed while the sun was only five degrees above the horizon. So when they arrived, they saw no browns or tans anywhere, only fairly high contrast grays. But you did. But Yes, I did. The sun was 11 degrees, and Apollo 12 did also. The next day, when, the, uh, when they arose from their sleeping period and the sun was higher, of course, then the browns were observable to them. Of course, it was during this same interview that Neil was asked to describe the lunar sky from the surface of the moon. It was deep black, he said, and ignorant conspiracy theorists have taken this as evidence that he was never there and have called him a liar. Our eyes behave very much like a camera with an automatic exposure control. In bright sunlit conditions, the pupil constricts to limit the amount of light entering the eye. Stars are not visible to the naked eye under those conditions, just as they are not visible to a camera with its exposure set for the sunlit surface of the moon. The sky is uh, a deep black. The sky is uh, a deep black. It is to be hoped that some hoax nuts are starting to wake up to the realisation that people like Bill Casing and David Percy have sold them an absolute crock. Inevitably, some hoax nuts are so desperate to protect their delusions that they have declared Chang'e 3 itself to be fake. Of course, if it is fake, then NASA and Arizona State University must be in on it too, and actively colluding since the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter has sent back photos of the lander and rover on the lunar surface. Other truth seekers take a different tack, confidently informing the sheeple of the world that rock formations on the horizon are alien structures or crashed UFOs. Yep, keep taking the tablets, chaps. The Chang'e mission is very real. And NASA might even be flattered that China chose a lander design and engine configuration that so closely resembles the Apollo lunar module. China's choice of a 60 mile lunar parking orbit, a 60 by 9 mile descent orbit and powered descent from 9 miles is also a direct copy of Apollo's proven lunar landing method. There are other similarities too. For example, the way the landing pads disturb lunar regolith and the way the descent engines move dust radially away from the landing area, as we saw in the piece of Chinese film I showed at the start of this video. So let's finish with the film of the Apollo 16 landing, with the unmistakable voice of Charlie Duke calling out the numbers for Mission Commander John Young. Perfect place over here, John. A couple of big boulders. Not too bad. Okay, 80 feet, 93. Looking super. There's dust. Okay, down at 3. 50 feet, down at 4. Give me one quick up. Get back it up slightly. Okay, two down. Stand by for contact. Gonna let her down. You level off. Better on down. Okay, 76%, plenty fat. Contact. Stop. Ooh. Pro, in charge. Thank you.